Again, welcome to introduction to computers, programs, and Python. And this is again our Python lecture one. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss about the basic concept of computers and what is the hardware, software, what is program, uh, etc. Again, this is our first unit one lectures, part one for Python. So our main objective here is to understand computer basics programs and also operating system. So what is a computer? And we said a computer consists of CPU, memory, hard disk, input and output device, and also communication de devices. So here, if we have any electronic machine that have a memory and some form of central processing unit, and it has a storage device, and an input and output device, an input device that allow us to input a data into the system, and output device to display a result or convey a result to other devices. And also we have a communication device which make it possible for the device to communicate with another device, then it's a computer. So a computer will be an electronic machine that can take an input process the input and be able to store the input or display the output, also be able to store the output results and also be able to communicate the result to other devices. So a computer may have a storage device, a memory, CPU, communication devices, input devices, and output devices. So input device can be, example, the keyboard and mouse. Those are the two most common input device. And mic also can be an input device to take audio message in. A communication device can be a modem. A modem is a device that make it possible for two computers to communicate through a telephone line or a NIC card. This is network interface card, NIC that also make it possible for two computers to communicate with each other through a cable or some other form of media. A CPU will be the brain of the computer. That is the central processing unit. So CPU have the major two parts, the control unit that control the flow of data from the memory to the CPU. And also it has the arithmetic logic unit. This is the main unit that perform the arithmetic operations and also the logical operations. Then a memory is like a temporary storage place. So for example, when we start our computer, the operating system will be loaded to the memory. So any work we do, we do it from the memory. And then a storage device is where we can keep a data for as long as we want. With memory, when the computer goes off, the data again are lost. And so the data is only can be stored in the memory when the computer is on. But with storage device, either the computer is on and off, the data will be still stored. So let's go through each component one at a time. So we start with the CPU. Again, the CPU is the central processing unit, mm. which is the brain of the computer. It retrieves information from the memory, execute the information, then send the information back to the memory. And the CPU speed is measured in megahertz. So one mega is equal to one million pulses per second. So the speed of a CPU has been improved for so many years back. And now we're almost in billions, so one gigahertz, which means one billion pulses per second. That's uh, very fast. The next is the memory. So a memory is a place also that we can store our data and the program. But anytime we are working with our computer, the data or the program is temporarily stored in the memory. So a memory is, the, is to store data and program instruction for CPU to execute. And also the memory unit is an ordered sequence of bytes. And each old is so eight bits. So eight bits represent one byte. So anytime we enter one character, that one character will represent eight bits, and bits will be a combination of zeros and ones. 
So a program and its data must be brought to the memory before they can be executed. So that's why, as we said earlier, when we start our computer, the operating system must be loaded to the memory. We do most of all our work from the memory. So a memory byte is never empty. It is initially, initial content may be meaningless to your computer. So the current content of a memory byte is lost whenever new information is placed on it. Also, when the computer is turned off, all the content of the memory will be lost also. So we also use the term volatile. Volatile means the data in the memory can only be stored in the memory when the computer is on. When the computer goes off, the data is gone. But storage device or ROM read-only memory is a permanent storage. So how data is stored? Normally in computer system, we have something called a machine language. Machine language is normally a combination of zeros and one. This is the language that the computer understands. So even we have an operating system, we have all the application in our computer. When I enter my name, Charles, I'm saying that I'm enter C-H-A-R-L-E-S. But there is a software in the operating system that have to convert these characters to, again, machine language for the CPU to understand. So, uh, 0101. So this is a very good example. And memory also is like a, it has its own unique boxes, or we use the term cell. Each cell has its own address. So let's see here, let's say we have a cell, the address of this cell is 2000. Again, this is just uh, an example. In the real world, the cell's address or the memory address will be in a decimal. A decimal is a combination of digit from zero to nine and characters from A to F. So you have 16 digits and characters together. Uh, so here we have the address, memory address to be 2000. This is the memory content. So this information means something. Here we say it means J. So if I want to store Java, one cell will have the J, which is a combination of eight bits represent one byte. Then A also have its combination of eight bits. V have its combination. And also A have its combination. Now I want to enter number three also the same thing. We have the combination. So this is how data are stored in a computer. It have to be a, a machine language or binary numeric system, 0101s. And each character symbol represents one byte. A byte represents eight bits, combination of zeros and ones. So here we say data of various kinds, such as numbers, characters, and strings are encoded as a series of bits. Even images are also encoded in a series of bits, zeros and ones. So computer use zeros and ones because digital devices have two stable states, which are referred to as zero and one. So zero may off and one will mean on two states. The programmers need to be concerned about the coding and decoding of data, which is again, uh, performed automatically Previously, let's say, let's go back way to maybe 1970s or 60s. Programmers, programmers must be concerned. Right? Because there we normally, those days, programmers normally again, write the code to interact with the computer hardware. There was no any software like ID, integrated development environment, like a compiler to again convert the higher language to machine language. Those days in the 60s, there was no even a higher level language or the language like uh, machine language. But today, again, programmers need not to be concerned about the encoding and decoding of data. This is done automatically. So the encoding scheme varies. For example, the character J represents 01001010 in one byte. Etc. So a storage device, uh, we say the memory is volatile because information is lost when the power is off. But a storage device is permanent. Uh, for example, will be a CD 
or the hard drive or floppy disk or flash drive. These are all storage devices that when we store data, it will be there for permanent. Also an Apple device, example, yes, monitor. An Apple device will be any device that display the output from the computer, that will be the result. So a monitor is a very good example, but also a projector or even a printer and a camera can also be an Apple device. A printer, we can print our results out. A camera, we can display the camera screen our result out. And we also have communication device. Communication device are the device that make it possible for two or more computers to communicate with each other. Either they are sharing software applications or they are sharing data or even they are sharing hardware. Example would be a computer lab. We may have one printer that is supporting 20 computers. So these 20 computers are sharing one printer. So that's, that must be a communication device that make it possible. A two common communication device, one is the modem. A regular modem make it possible for two computers to communicate through a telephone line. Then we also have the NIC card, network interface card, which make it again possible to two computers to communicate through a cable or maybe a wireless form. And now next we go to what is a program. This is where we are going to focus mostly. So computer program, sometimes we call it software or code, are instructions to the computer. So computer program is writing an instruction for the computer to perform. So I can write a code to find a sum of two numbers. So I'm telling the computer as the user to enter the two values, then later you had the numbers together. And this is where we are going to use our Python to do. So we are going to use the Python programming language to create different types of again, software or computer programs that may execute different tasks. So here you tell a computer what to do through programs. So without programs, a computer is an empty machine. And also the software we have two times. We have, a, we have two types, the system software and application software. So the operating system will be a system software because system software is any software that interacts with the computer hardware. So every computer has to come with an operating system because the operating system will communicate with the CPU, the memory, the printer, or any hardware device attached to the computer. Then we have the application software. These are the software that will perform a specific task. Example is in our course, we are going to write application software, maybe to find a sum of two numbers or to display a result or to find an interest rate of a loan given with an interest rate of some amount uh, and a principal amount. We can find the interest that the loan will end. So programs are written using programming languages. And in this course, we are going to learn Python programming language to develop programs or softwares. So program language, we have the machine language, assembly language, high level language. Python is a high level language. A high level language is a language that is uh, close to human language, something that, for example, most uh, Python is close to English. Computer doesn't understand print. So we may have, we may have uh, an IDE or a compiler or interpreter or translator that again will compile our code and change it from high level language to machine language. Machine language is 0101. So as we said earlier, in the 60s, 70s, early 70s, programmers write their code in machine language. Before assembly language came, assembly language is close to machine language, but we use some command which is uh, resemble English, for example, load, store, etc. So we may have a special program called Assembler that will convert the assembly language to machine language for the computer to understand. And um, right now we are in high level language such as C++, Java, Python. This our language also uses IDE, integrated development environment or compilers, interpreters to convert it to machine language.
So machine language is a set of primitive instructions built into every computer. The instructions are in the form of binary code in 0101, as we can see an example here. So programming with a native machine language is very, very tedious. So we can imagine writing our own code and using zero ones. So these are in the sixties. This is what computer programmers does. Today we write our code almost like writing English language. So very easy to write, but later we may need compiler or interpreter to convert it to machine language. So first assembly language were developed to make programming language easy. An assembly language has something called the assembler that will convert the language again to machine language. So assembler, we have our assembler language, the source file. Assembler will convert it to machine code for again for the CPU or the computer to understand. Then we came up with the higher level language. Example here, we write era equal to five times, five times 3.1415. Everything is in English. So the same thing also here, high level language, we need a special software that will convert it to machine language for us. And normally we use compiler or interpreter. So high level language are English-like and easy to learn and program. And one of the user friendliness to learn low learning curve is the Python. So these are some of the popular high level languages. We have Kobo, Fortran, Java, Basic, Pascal, and the other is one of the, the first object oriented programming. And uh, C, Visual Basic, that is Microsoft, Defi, C, C Sharp, and of course, Python also. So this course, we're going to focus on Python. So when you write your programs, we said earlier in higher level language, we need to compile our source code using a compiler. So here we see a program written in a high level language is called a source for program. Since a computer cannot understand a source program, program called compiler or interpreter is used to translate a source program into machine language program call an object program. Then the object program is often then linked with other supporting library code before the object can be executed. What we mean by library code, we may write a program and we want to use an existing code ready in the IDE. And so we don't need to write all the, for example, if I want to print an item in Python, I will write the keyword print, everything lowercase because in the lab, in the ID of uh, Python, the print is already written and it's understood in the library file to display something on a screen. So this is the steps. First, we have our source file. We create our source file using the Python language. Then we compile it. We get machine language. But we will need some library code, like if we use any uh, functions that is a built-in function that this is has its code in the system. So those are called the, the built-in methods or functions are like a library code are in the library code. So we link them together, then we execute and get our final running code executable execute executable file. Then we have what we call operating system. So operating system, as we said earlier is the software that interacts with the computer hardware and also the computer application. So we can see what operating system is. It interacts with the hardware and also the operating system. And the user normally interacts with the application softwares or programs. So for example, I'm using Microsoft Word. I create a document, it's an application program. When I want to print, I will send my document to the operating system the operating system will send it to the printer. So we, have, we are going to end our first lecture here. Again, this is our first lecture in Python. And in these lectures, we go through what is a computer. And we also summarize everything about computer, uh, give a definition, a short explanation of each component, major component in the computer system. Also, we talk about what is a program, 
types of softwares we have, and also what is a hardware. So in our next lecture, we are going to start with the Python. Uh, so again, wish everybody the best and thank you. Also, I will post these lectures in my YouTube channel. So if you can comment or like or subscribe, I'll be glad. Thank you.